And indeed, our precious Savior did die on the cross for all of our sins, just as we have sung. And yes, it was for sins that I did, and sins that you did, and you did, and you did. Sins of each of us that he's died, and they're fully paid for there at the cross of Calvary. And that really is the point of the story that Jesus told in our Gospel reading from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, in the parable of the wedding banquet. You've just heard the story. The king prepared a wedding feast. And he invited people to come to this wedding feast. Very often, not always, you see people prepare invitations to a wedding. I think sometimes the young people go a little overboard on those sorts of things these days and invite all their family and all their friends and there's this discussion. Should we invite Aunt Matilda? She's a little loony and liable to dance on the tabletop topless, but yeah, if we don't invite Aunt Matilda, um, that side of the family is going to be mad, right? They have such discussions like that when you were planning a wedding years ago? No. Well, you didn't have an Aunt Matilda, but, but there was an invitation list, wasn't there? And people commonly do that. Um, not everybody. Um, the truth is, what I've discovered in my short career doing the pastor thing is the more involved the wedding, the fancier it is, and the more complicated the, the, the lists and the more money they spend on it, the shorter the wedding, the marriage is going to last. You can almost put it on your calendar. Uh, if they spend half a year's salary on the wedding, the wedding will last a maximum of four to five years. Maximum. The ones that put on their coats and go down before the, the pastor and get married, those are the ones that live happily ever after. <laughs> for the most part. Not always, but for the most part. Because the stuff and nonsense wasn't at the heart of their deal. But a royal wedding... Why, the people wouldn't have a quiet royal wedding, would they? Suppose this wedding that took place this past year in England had taken place behind closed doors in the chapel with just the priest and the princess and the prince. The public would be incensed, wouldn't they? So in a sense, the whole world was invited to part of the wedding. They put it on YouTube. I watched part of it live on YouTube. They put it out there for us all to see, whether we had TV or just a computer or what. The king threw a party. And, and the people didn't come. Suppose nobody had showed up at Windsor Cathedral for the prince's wedding this past year. Would the English crown have been upset? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you threw a wedding and, and invited scads of people and everybody says, I'm too busy. You're low on my totem pole. I really don't care. And that's what these people were saying about the king's son. Hey, it's just a wedding. Come on. The king was not happy. Go get anybody you can find. Invite them in. Now, sometimes, in various cultures in the world, there's a custom of giving wedding gifts to the people who attend. Some 
trifle. Sometimes it's just a scroll with a, you know, paper printed little thing with a ribbon around it. It's a commemoration of the wedding. Um, sometimes it's a couple of nets. I've been at all sorts of shindigs where there were all sorts of things. Uh, was at a fancy wedding once where they handed out little ceramic bells with the people's name on it. Um, hmm, funny, the bell didn't break until about 20 years after they were di divorced, but like I said, sometimes the fancier things are, the shorter it goes. But um, in those days, if you went to a royal wedding, you didn't come dressed in your furs. You saw the wedding in England, didn't you? The people seated, seated in the front row. Remember the lady with the fancy hat? Oh, it was a dolled up thing, wasn't it? And there were ladies there in their furs and their finery, and the gentlemen were there in their uniforms. They were military with their decorations on them. You didn't go in the king's presence to the king's wedding party that way. He gave you a garment to put on for the wedding feast. That was kind of simple in those days. Most people wore some sort of robe anyway. Uh, I guess today you would say they weren't very properly dressed because everybody sort of wore a bathrobe. That was your clothing. Well, the king had it, had something that went on over your clothes, so everybody looked appropriately elegant, and nobody looked any more elegant than the king. All very nice. As they come in the door to the party, the doorkeepers put the garment on you. The king looks out across there, and there's somebody not wearing the wedding garment. Now do you think he's ticked? What I gave you at the door wasn't good enough for you? You had to rip it off? You had to take it off of you and throw it away? Time hand and foot and get him out of here. The pompous pig Throw him out into the darkness where there will be gnashing of teeth. Throw him out of the party where he might look in the window and look in the door and see the party going on, but he can't be part of the party. Get him out of here. Now this is a parable. Jesus is comparing this to something else to help us understand it. The king has thrown a wedding party. His son Jesus is the bridegroom. We are the brides. Yes, Joe, I mean, he, I, this is hard for me to figure in, but even we guys are the brides, are part of the bride of Christ. That's our relationship with him, is as brides, if you will. We're here at the feast. He's given us something at the front door. He's given this to us through word and water. He's given this to through baptism, through his blood shed at the cross. He's given us the wedding garment, the garment that covers the garment we come with. And the garment we come with is sin. It's dirty, it's soiled. It's nasty. Remember the streets in those days had horse drawn carriages. The hem of your garment that you arrive with is nasty. It's dirty. It's smelly. And the king has put his clean garment on us instead. The garment of righteousness, the garment of salvation. And he's done it freely. 
Nobody coming to a royal wedding banquet had to have ten dollars in their hand to rent the, the, the wedding garment for the evening. It was free. It was a gift. I'm not sure you could probably wear it home as a memento of the day. What Jesus is talking about is people here who were given this free gift, the gift of salvation. But for them it's not good enough. They want to wear instead to this banquet the mink stole of self-righteousness. They want to wear the diamond ring of I worked hard and I earned a place in this. I was on the altar guild. I was in the elders. I was on the committee. I did, I did, I did, I did. And I deserve a place in here without any of that stuff you gave me at the doorway. I don't need these wedding garments. I don't need what Christ has given me. I've earned it. That's what he's talking about, throwing off the garment. Singing, I did it my way. Because you can't do it your way. If it's going to get done, it's going to be done his way. His way so full, so free, so sweet, as a gift. A gift his son earned the hard way, suffering and dying for us completely. Amen. We have... Debbie, John, Charlie's up on a tower somewhere. We ought to we ought to pray for him today for sure. Anna Laura, and can we tell them? Well, they partly know Joe's getting married. Joe. Wednesday. Wednesday, so we need and to. And the reason that it was changed from today was because of a school incident. Uh, I didn't know that uh, school could be held on Sundays and Saturdays in Mexico. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was shocked to know that. Yeah, yeah, very secular situation there. Yeah. Well, let us go to the Lord in prayer then. Almighty Father, we thank you that you have invited us to the feast. And we thank you that you thought enough of us to do that. We thank you that your son Jesus died for us and rose again to bring us to life with him. Lord, help us to never want to throw off the wedding garment you have given us through your son Jesus. Lord, there are those among us and among our friends with various issues and illnesses going along. Among them are Charlie, who's high on a tower today. We ask you to guard over him, take care of him, keep him safe up there, bring him back down safely as soon as is reasonable. We lift up to you Debbie and her needs. We ask you to strengthen her and give her courage. And we ask you to look over John, to give him health, to restore him speedily, Lord. We lift up to you Joe and his bride to be. We ask you to bless them now and for all the years of their life with, together with great joy great peace and great wonderfulness. We ask that you would guide the doctors who are looking after Anna Laura to show them what to do for her, strengthen her, strengthen her mother as well. We lift up to you Chris Johnson. We ask you to continue to strengthen her lungs and heart, 
to restore her to health. We lift up to you Wanda Nell and Scott and be with them, give them joy and peace. Send them a miracle, Lord. And Lord, if there be any we haven't named, you know their needs. Walk with them and restore them and give them health according to your will. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.